recently I bought this rather smart looking toolkit RC charger or smart charger it does many other things and I'll be doing another review of this in a separate video but one of the things to note is that allegedly it's 400 watts that's up to 18 amps 1 to 8 s uh, clearly this little cell is not going to be able to do that what would be nice would be to have a power supply for it toolkit RC have a power supply for this and I think the 200 watt one is about 30 or 40 euros. I seemed to remember that you can modify one of these old Xbox power supplies to do the same job. Looking at the specification here, we can see that it's up to 203 watts, and that will provide 12 volts at 16.5 amps. So that's adequate for my needs. I don't think I'm going to be charging anything close to 18 amps anytime soon. In this video then I'm going to show you how to modify this guy to be able to supply power for any charger of your choice. I should be using an old XT60 connector off a deceased battery as the connector. First thing to do then is to get inside we want to remove this rather unwieldy cable. Using an old blunt pair of side cutters we should be able to remove these feet. After a degree of persuasion they do come out and underneath those little plugs just a regular crosshead screw. These are rather tight and require a degree of uh, persuasion. With those removed then, we can simply separate the top. Now, when working on any power supply, obviously it's not going to be plugged into the mains, um, but there may be charged capacitors in here, so approach things with a degree of caution. We can see here the thick cable. What I'm going to do is to obviously cut the cables off of here. You can strip this back and use those cables should you wish to do it that way. Personally I prefer to cut them close and replace the whole thing. Similarly you can either decide to just twist these cables together and use them or you could unsolder from the top of the board there. The red and blue wire here are sense wires which would normally go to the Xbox to enable the 12 volt output. You can either just twist those together or bridge the solder joint at the top here which is a, what I think I'm going to do. Just separating those out then we have a, a bunch of black wires which are obviously negative and we have these four yellow ones which are going to be positive. So I'm now just going to strip back the ends of those wires so that I can solder on my connector. I've gone ahead and prepared the two cables then. There's the four blacks twisted together and the four yellows. I've cut these two off. I'm just going to bridge across there. What you could do is to put a switch onto those wires if you wanted to switch the, uh, the unit on and off, but I'm simply going to unplug it. There is a spare black one there. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to do. It goes to this connection here and it shows continuity to these four so I think I'm just going to leave that one disconnected. Here's my prepared power connector for the charger and I've robbed the grommet, cut that off of the original cable and passed the wires through there so that will fit fairly neatly in place there. So I'll go ahead now and do that soldering gone ahead and soldered everything in place now a little bit of heat shrink over the end of the wires see my link on the top everything should be working now I'm just going to pop the top cover on and we'll give it a test I've plugged in and got a green light which is a good thing and I can feel air passing out of there that's fine let's just check see if we have some voltage and there 12.23 so far so good we can now 
plug that into my charger. Just going to try now with a relatively small pack, a 2.2 ampere hour graphene pack, 3S. Going to set it at automatic charge current 2.2, so 1C. Let's see what it does. One of the oddities of this charger it has some sort of a, uh, intelligent approach to charging. It's higher current than the 2.2 that I've set, but this appears to be whilst it's trying to balance the cells. Once the cells are in balance, you see it's gone to zero there to, to check what's going on. It will even itself out to the uh, 2.2 amps, as we can see there. So we can see that it works and it's just pulling the 2 amps, so no particular stress. What we'll want to do though is to see if it can charge this bad boy at a much higher current, this being a 5.2 ampere hour 4S. Go back to our menu and we'll change the charge current up to, what shall we say, uh, 2C would be about 10 amps. Let's take it up to 12 amps and see what happens. Once again we can see it's in this sort of mode where it's balancing the cells out. Also note our input voltage there, 11.8. ramping the current up a little bit more now. Also note that it's pulling just over a, a hundred watts or putting out, I should say, I believe that's the output, 110 watts. See the current gradually being ramped up there. You may have just heard the fan has come on. Now it's getting up more to around our 12 amps. So now we are at 12 amps and we can see 191 watts out. The power supply is probably going to be around 200 watts, so we're getting up to the, to the limit now. Of course, what you're going to want to know is what happens if we exceed the power rating of the supply. In which case, let's ramp the current up now to 15 amps, which would be nearly 3C, so it should be safe enough for the battery, but it's going to be too much for the power supply. What will happen? Will the magic smoke escape? We're now back around our 12 amp mark, input voltage 11.67, 192 watts, 197 watts, 198, 200. So we're now outputting over 200 watts, which means that the poor old supply is being caned. 209. Would it go bang? Everybody on the edge of their seats. The high speed fan has now kicked in on the charger and input low. We can see the LED on the Xbox power supply has gone red to indicate that it's in a fault condition and it's switched itself off effectively. So sadly for you folks there are uh, no, no huge balls of flame or, or smoke or anything particularly exciting. What we would have to do now, I don't think it's actually overheated it's just gone into its alarm condition if I remove the power from it see the red light go out just wait a moment and it's reset back to the green condition if I now 
put the current back down to say our sort of 2S condition of the 10 amps it's back there charging again watching this running to the end of charge will be a little bit tedious you'll have to trust me I'm going to pause the video there and come back at the end and note if anything untoward has happened I haven't got to full charge yet but just to point out that at 10 amps 16 volts 160 watts the supply is quite comfortable at that still outputting 11.7 volts and you can see the timer at the top of the screen showing three three and a half minutes so I'm going to pause the video again as I say come back when the charge is complete and you can then if you're of a particularly skeptic mode take a look at the timer at the top there as the charge is terminating the current is falling off there finally it's finished now finished charging and it was just waiting for the cell balancing to come up to within the the spec so 4.18 each on those two 4.2 on those two but the main thing is that the power supply mod very well worth doing very inexpensive you should be able to pick up one of these for for free ask your family and friends they've probably got one lying around if not a thrift store or car boot sale that sort of thing well worth the effort i think Thanks for watching.